So I thought it would be fun to take this opportunity today to talk a little bit about my choices in both technique and subject for this painting. I apologize for not recording the paint mixing process. It kind of slipped my mind. I was really just having a wonderful time matching these unusual skin tones as I spoke about before with the very warm shadows and the very cool highlights. This is actually taken from a photo that I snapped on my outdoor bathroom very early in the morning so it really was a very cool light and I guess because of the partial shaded covering plus there is a very dark brown black pumice wall behind me, I think that's what gave the warm shadows behind. So as you can see in her darker tones, there are a lot of purples and very warm browns. I used a terra rosa as well as a violet cobalt to really warm up the initial skin tone. I'll link below for my previous skin tone mixing video specifically about mixing Caucasian skins and you'll see sort of my basis start for how I begin all my tones. I'll give you a little hint here too though, I always start every skin tone with a white, a ochre or yellow, a pink or red, and then some sort of green. And that's a pretty much universal truth for any type of skin tone. Later on when you get into highlights and shadows I'll always add more, but that simple basis is how you start a skin tone. Of course you want to be using white more than anything. The pinks, yellow, reds, oranges, those can all be sort of coming in uh, secondary but still quite quite vividly and then a, just a touch of green at the end helps to even it out and make things not too bright. The face was certainly a bit of a challenge on this painting just because it was so small. But I just took a deep breath and pulled out my very tiniest brushes and just really was very careful with every brush stroke. It's funny because I think sometimes people think that smaller paintings are easier because they are smaller and seem to require less time but I can find that larger paintings are actually way easier because you can be, you know, a millimeter or so off and you're going to be okay. But with small paintings, you have to be extremely exact. There is no room for error. So this part is actually going to be quite interesting because the light was coming through in very interesting ways that morning and this is definitely a first for me painting giant blocks of bright white highlight. Normally this kind of thing can really flatten a painting but I'm just going to go for it. This series is all about light streaming through interesting filters and patterns and I'm just gonna go for it and I think it's gonna turn out pretty well.
here like up on the arm before in the face you can really see the super super cool bright brights coming in I mixed up my skin tone and added quite a bit of extra white and my favorite Naples yellow um, I think a little bit more pink as well too if I remember correctly and then that blue is a nice bright cerulean blue So here we go. This is the beginning of another crazy move I'm deciding to use on this work. There was a very dark shadow that cut across just at the very base of the rib cage, as you can see by this dark bold line. And I'm hoping at this point during the painting that it is going to come across as a shadow mark and not as a too emphasized slightly chopped off rib cage. This part I actually really spent a long time working and reworking and again it was one of those decisions like the white highlight up top that kind of goes against everything you're taught when painting in a realistic fashion from life. You're taught that shadows begin on one end and they end on the other with the penumbral as well as you know reflective light and that kind of thing so to have a dark bold shape cut across your highlight or vice versa to have a huge highlight with very stark edges cut across your shadow area is definitely a bit of a mental challenge but that's one thing I wanted to do with this series. I wanted to give myself a challenge. These shadow shapes and highlight shapes definitely make for an interesting composition and I hope that they come through. And I think I'll learn a lot more about really being able to focus on what's in front of me and replicate the best I can rather than generalizing or adding in things that I think are there but aren't really, which can definitely happen. Well, thanks for joining me on this painting journey today, folks. I hope you learned a little something. If you do, think about hitting that subscribe button. And I would really appreciate some feedback on this video. Do you like this format where I kind of talk over it so you can see what I'm doing? Um, let me know, like I said before, if you would be interested in any real-time videos. Of course, I won't do an entire eight-hour painting in real time, but, you know, parts and pieces I can do with sort of a discussion. Anyways, I really love you folks and I really appreciate your feedback, so have a great rest of your day and thank you so much for joining me. As always, I will see you soon.